Welcome back to another episode of the Ace Talks podcast, where we talk about Ecuador and a little more. Today, we're here with my good friend and brother, Don Shader. <laughs> How's it going, Don? Good, good. How are we doing? Great to see you. It's good to see you too. I heard today you had a pretty complicated time getting here to Puerto Viejo. <laughs> Anytime I drive to Puerto Viejo, it's a complicated time. No, I can it's, dig it's that. Okay. It's, 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 it's a stressful event because you have to get through Monte Cristo and then you have to drive in Puerto Viejo. But I always survive it. I get you. Where me driving on my motorcycle to Manta, it's, uh, for me the stress is mainly feeling like the cars that zip by you, like they could take you like away at any moment. It's like, oh, uh, always my tiny concern. My little heart attack for today. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> let's talk about what we have today's conversation. We seem to always talk about on our channels you know, giving advice, not advice, but, you know, talking about our experiences and saying why maybe you should come to Ecuador. And a lot of channels here in the Ecuador space, in the travel space to Ecuador or retire to or live in Ecuador space, they always talk about, you know, you should come to Ecuador because of this, because of that. But what are some reasons why someone considering coming to Ecuador, maybe they shouldn't come to Ecuador? What do you think? Well, that's a good question because... I can come up with all kinds of answers for that, and the primary one, the first one I always want to tell people, one reason why you should not come to Ecuador is if you think it's going to be unicorns and rainbows when you get here, or you think it's going to be paradise, or you come here with high expectations that it's going to be like it is back home. It's another country, it's a different culture, and that's all there is to it. I tell people on my channel, leave your expectations at the airport in the States, and you'll be okay. Do you think that someone who's coming here to escape their problems should come to Ecuador? Like, do you think they're going to be free of problems if they come to Ecuador? No, not at all. No. It'll be worse. <laughs> It'll be worse. And, and I'll tell you the reason why. It's because that problem will show. It'll show in their personality. It'll show in their behavior, their demeanor. It's, it's easy to tell. We've all met those people. And I guarantee when you look for root calls, it all boils down to running away from something. It doesn't work. You got to face your problems. Got to face them. No matter where you're at. All right. What do you think about in terms of food? Do you think that someone who is accustomed to a specific type of food set in the States is going to be happy coming here to Ecuador? Specifically junk food. Because, <laughs> I mean, let's face it, junk food is an epidemic in the United States. It is so easy to, ah, I'm not going to cook today. Look, there's Papa John's. There's Burger King. There's McDonald's. There's numbers of fast food joints on every corner. And it's so easy to just stop and pick something up on the way home and it's all going to be junk food you know and you're not going to find that here i mean there's places you can get sidewalk what do you call those um sidewalk vendors that sell food ceviche and stuff uh, they're just vendors they're sidewalk yeah, it's vendors. just like sidewalk yeah. vendors yeah i mean there's those here but even that is better than the garbage that we're putting in our mouths in the united states that's causing the epidemic of obesity, heart disease, diabetes, you name it. And it's all because of fast food and junk food. And folks, if you come to Ecuador expecting to find it here, it's gonna be a sad day for you. <laughs> you cry when you're like, where's there, my junk there's food? There's restaurants, I mean, you go to any food court in any of the malls and there, there's the fast food joints, but they're not on every street corner. Not like they are in the United States. Not at all. And the junk food here is a little bit different. It's, you know, like if you live in some place like Manabi, like where we're living in right now, like there's a different kind of what you would consider junk food. But it's nothing like in the States. Yeah. Not to that level anyways. What is a good junk food here? What, would, what is, give me an example if you would. People like to consider good junk food, but I don't know or if just that's just junk justification. Food I mean, Manavi is food. Good junk food. <laughs> I, I know, it's weird to call something that's junk good. <laughs> something but that'll kill you is good. Typically, people here, at least in part of their, their diet, they always say that, for example, pan de almidon, corviche, there's the bolon. Because if you think of what they're, they're composed of, the pan de almidon, cheese, but it's like starch with cheese. Yeah. Uh, there's the bolon, which is plantain but with either cheese or with uh, pork rinds, uh, chicharron. Mm -hmm. And there's the uh, corviche, which is also like some kind of plantain on the outside, fried, but on the inside it has fish. So I think the justification for these foods being healthy, one, because no one wants to admit that they're unhealthy, mm -hmm. and two, because it's like it has a healthy component inside. 
cheese, uh, pork, which could be considered healthy depending on your diet, and um, fish, yeah. which is considered healthy in general. But um, like you were saying, Don, like in general, if you're looking for junk food, not really the best thing, especially if you're trying to take care of your health. I always say going into my not Ecuador content creation, but into my fitness side, when you want to take care of yourself, exercise is good. It's important. Walk, jog, run, lift weights. But more important than exercise, if you're trying to take care of your health, is what you eat. The food is the most important thing when it comes to either losing weight or maintaining a specific weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. So uh, what do you think, uh, going back into what we were talking about, other points, what about the people? I'll tell you, I can say one thing. I always like to tell this to my subscribers that I'll give you a good example of how, what people are like here, okay? My friend that lives in Monta that I have to bring here to Soka here in Puerto Viejo for his uh, medical treatments. I, bring, I was bringing him here just so he can go in and get uh, some treatment on some bandage wrap and stuff and have it done properly. And I waited out in the parking lot across the street from the hospital, the little the dirt parking lot where you pay a dollar all day to park. All right. And so was, the last time we were there, I was sitting in my car in that parking lot, just overcast, from the window down, just sitting there waiting, and there's a couple that gets out of a car and they're walking across the field. And it was a couple that's probably my age, you know, in their 60s or 70s, you know, and the, the old man was looking at me. In the States, my reaction would have been, what the F are you looking at? But here in Ecuador, I looked at him and said, buenos dias, and motioned to him. And he smiled and waved. That will not happen in the United States. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. That tells you what people in Ecuador are like. That guy right there represented Ecuador just with his friendly gesture and his greeting and his returning of hello. You know, it happens all the time. And I tell people, if you don't believe me, go to the mall and just anybody pick anybody and say buena uh, you know hello buena buenas dias buenas tardes just greet them they will always greet you back another example and this is a good representation of the people of ecuador at the same hospital me and my buddy mike were waiting for my other buddy uh, mark to come out of treatment and we were standing in the hallway and we're two big guys and we're standing up across from each other just chit-chatting Everybody that walked by greeted us. Now, I don't know if it's because we were two big, ugly looking, great, you know, gorilla <laughs> looking guys to tenor, but they spoke to us, all right? And I noticed that people will always speak to you. That goes a long ways. That goes a long ways when it comes to human interaction. I think it's important that we acknowledge each other, you know? And America has completely lost that idea, it's completely gone. That's a big net positive then because at least from, from the way that I'm hearing it, like I didn't know uh, there was so much confrontation in the States when I was there, maybe because I was a kid, I didn't really see it as much like maybe because I had an environment to be able to interact. But I do remember a friend of mine told me who was living in New York, now he lives over here, he told me that uh, in New York someone looks at you and you're like, what you looking at? And it's yeah. like about to, it's like fight time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what's up? And you know, the fists are up and it's like, there are a lot of angry people in the United States. Lots and lots of angry people. And you don't see that here. As a side. You see angry expats here that bring that anger with them. Uh, you know, but that's a whole nother video. For sure. Just as a little side note to that, why do you think there's so much anger in the States? Like, why do you think there's this reaction? Funny you should mention that because I was thinking about this morning, this, I was thinking this morning, there's too damn many people, mm. you know? Society sucks right now compared to how life was when I was a kid growing up in the 60s and the 70s, you know, and finishing school and just building a life for myself. And pe we weren't like that. And of course, you know, the population of the United States was half of what it is right now. And I also think that the internet has really done more harm than it's done good. And the, the fact that the government in the United States has taken God out of the home and out of the schools and taken discipline away from parents. People, kids are watching violent games, first person shooter games on the internet and on their Xboxes and all this kind of stuff instead of reading a book and getting an education. Everybody's angry. You know, and there's so many people competing for that space. 
that space that I want to be seen, I want to be heard, I want to be known. It's competition. It's just the competition is out of control. Just my opinion. No, of course. As a teacher, I do want to give my two cents, at least on the part where you say that the discipline part, mm -hmm. even in schools, it's, it's terrible. Like, I, I've openly complained about the situation here in Ecuador, about how teachers don't have power in schools. But I've seen, and this is why I understand, like, a lot of people might think I don't understand what's going on in the States, but I watch the States news as well. I know there's the mass shooting. I know it's bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm, not, I'm never comparing Ecuador to the States to say that, oh, Ecuador is worse. I'm just trying to give a realistic perspective of what's, what to expect in Ecuador. Like you said, not rainbows and unicorns, not mm -hmm. the best place paradise in the world, just another place that has its own problems that you have to accept when you come here. But as a teacher, I see the way students treat teachers in the States. Like mm -hmm. over here, we don't have power. Yes, students will pass without, ha without being, you know, knowing what they need to know to pass like you'll get you'll give a student a failing grade and somehow you'll see them next year in the next grade like not even going into that, to summer school or not even like making it up no they got through with it how i i think anyone who's listened to me talk long enough knows why but um you know um <coughs> money um but if i look at if i compare it to what's happening in the states students are fighting their teachers they're yeah. they're punching their teachers yeah. teachers are to the level where they've put up with so much that they have to fight back, and for fighting back, they're the problem. And then on top of that, they see these on the internet, and kids think, hey, it's okay, I can do that too. Oh my God, yes. You know? And let me tell you something, I can remember, I won't tell you why or what I did, but I can remember when I was in the sixth grade, the principal, name was Jim Trotter, at Moore Junior High School in Tyler, Texas, paddle me with a wooden paddle in his office. He asked me a question, if I was going to do that again or something like that. And I said, no. And his answer was, I'm going to help you remember. And he stands up and scoots his desk over so he can have room to swing his paddle. And he paddled me in his office. That's what happened to me in the sixth grade. I did something really bad. I won't never tell anybody, but it's, it's something embarrassing that I did. But that kind of stuff stuck with me for a long time. No, and you do not see that today because kids know that they can get away with it. They're not going to get punished. Just like the adult crimes, criminals, the, the adults that commit crimes are getting a slap on the wrist instead of jail time. It definitely, it definitely all, add, all adds up. Over here, things similar to that happen, but I don't know if this happened in the States because I didn't go through it, but over here they make you sit on the bottle caps. Like, not sit, but they make you, like, kneel down on the bottle caps. Really? Yeah. They also beat your hands with a ruler. I, I've heard yeah. everything from what, of you, what you can imagine of, uh, you know, what people would now consider to be mistreating uh, a child. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the people who turn into adults from those children are, in general, very respectful. And some of them, there's a big argument to have that I don't want to get into in this, in this podcast episode, where there are some parents who now, I feel, because they don't want their children to go through the same thing, they defend their children like life or death. Like, oh my God, you can't hit my child. Not even hit. You can't yeah. talk to him bad. You can't yeah. yell at him. You can't treat him poorly because no, no, I don't want him to, to go through that. And I get it. I get no one wants their child to go through something like that. But if there's no discipline, if there's no repercussion, if the child just thinks that they can do whatever they want, what's going to happen when they become adults? Yeah, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to do, do the same thing. They're going to do the same thing. There's this TikTok kid. I don't know if you've seen that news as well. And I, I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but there's this uh, TikTok guy who goes around in, going into people's houses, trespassing. Yeah. Took the woman's dog. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And why? And he the says, kid. the police don't do anything about yeah. it, so I'm going to keep doing it. And he makes money on TikTok. So. It's ridiculous. Oh, man. We could talk for hours about that stuff. Because yeah. Same thing on YouTube. The guys, the First Amendment auditors just purposely violate, harass, just harass people as their defense they claim that constitutional amendments gives them the rights to do so. The video is all about the confrontation between these people and they, it sells advertising. Sad to say, you know. Yeah, ah, man. Sorry, I didn't mean to take you off. No, the no, don't even worry about it. It's just, yeah. it's just, I'm thinking about it and it just, it stresses me out. I even saw this thing about an Italian mm -hmm. YouTuber, uh, 
copy of Mr. Beast, but in a, the worst way possible, he actually got into a car accident and killed a child. Yeah. Like, and they, they had to disband their channel, and thank goodness they did because I do not want to see someone like that. One, having influence. Two, being out on the street because even the video made no sense. They were out insulting people because they had the nice, fancy car. What's amazing to me, I don't know, I think that video, that kid that was doing that, walking into people's houses, I think that was in the UK somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, if they did that in the United States, he would have already been shot. Oh. He would have been killed the first time. Around. No joke, everyone says that. He would have been done for, it. and he of course. Not, he wouldn't be walking out. No. You know? okay. Going back into uh, what reasons you wouldn't stay and like what you okay. shouldn't, why you shouldn't come to Ecuador. What you mentioned, uh, interesting point about the hospital. Do you think free health care, because as many might know by now, Ecuador does have free health care, public health care. Is it worth coming to Ecuador for? Like just for that? I think, and of course this is just my opinion, okay, I, I personally uh, have private insurance and if I have to go to the hospital, I'll go to a private hospital because I've been in the public hospitals and was really taken aback by what I saw. That was, I've been here two years and, and like going into this particular hospital that I went into made me think I'm really in a third world country. When you go to a hospital and you need to go in for surgery and they tell you, you have to bring your own aftercare, you can't bring your cell phone or an iPad or a, or a laptop or anything because it might get stolen from you. You have to bring your own toilet paper, your own band-aids, your own wrapping, your everything. You have to bring everything yourself. And to me, that's not hospital care, you know. This is just my opinion. If you come into Ecuador for free health care, yeah, it'll be free, but I'm telling you, in my opinion, and you might survive, but it's not going to be a pleasant experience for you. And we're spoiled in the United States. You go to a hospital in the United States, and it's not anything like what you'll see here. So, in short, good, yeah, cheap, free, yeah, will it make you happy? No, I don't think so. Here's one thing that I'd never forget. When you go into a public restroom in a hospital, you expect it to be clean. Uh, I went in this public restroom, didn't even have a toilet seat, didn't have toilet paper, didn't have soap to wash your hands with, nothing to dry your hands with, just a bowl on the floor. And it's a hospital. And it's a hospital. In the same way in the hospital room where this guy was, he was in a ward with three other people, three guys, their families had to come and be with them while they're in recovery, and the wives just piled up in the bed and split, spent the night with them, slept in the the beds with these guys snoring and make, <laughs> my friend told me you wouldn't believe some of the noises I heard in that room. I could never sleep in that kind of situation. If you come to Ecuador expecting free health care, yeah, you're going to get free health care, but I, I hope you don't have to use it. When it comes to health care and the, at least the physical appearance of it, which I did make a little bit of a mention of general things, not just, uh, not mainly streets and the, the environment, but in the States you have like these amazing facilities, you have everything that you need. State of the art. State of the art. Yeah. Over here, you're lucky if you even have art. Yeah. It's like, I guess you could say, you could say, okay, you're getting it free. And I guess that comes with a price. Yeah, you're actually really not getting it free. If you come here on the IESS system, you're going to pay oh, yeah. for it. But it's still, it's a lot, lot cheaper than the United States. When I first signed up for IESS, because of my age, my monthly premium was $71 a month. I dropped it and picked up private insurance. They gave me $15,000 a year where the coverage with $150 deductible, they cost me $59 a month. And that'll cover just about anything that I need. If I need more than that, I'll go back to the States and use Medicare in the VA. And when you come here, if you can afford private insurance, by all means. It know, does seem to be uh, the way. Yeah. Leaving the, the topic of, of health care to the side, there is road rage in the United States, but do you consider that there's... It's a sport. <laughs> do you consider that there's road rage here in Ecuador? I have not seen it. The, the, the worst road rage that I've seen here has been me. <laughs> 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 I mean, like I said a minute ago, expats bring their rage with them. You know, I always tell people to leave all that shit behind. But... I've, I've not seen any road rage here. I mean, I've seen people yelling here and there, but you know, in the United States, road rage often includes murder. 
Yeah, I have seen that. A lot of times. And see, that's the thing like about driving here is now you don't really experience road rage and you also don't see that many accidents either because nobody here wants to deal with the cops after an accident. No, no, no. In the worst case scenario, I think when it comes to that part, at least, the person who committed the, the act of, you know, mm -hmm. raging. The, yeah, yeah. If, if it's raging or like, you know, mm -hmm. a crash or anything, they run. Yeah. <laughs> they run really fast. But yeah, I think it's, it's not as bad as what I hear in the States. It's just a lot of honking, a lot of noise, a lot of yelling. Not a lot, but, you know, yeah. sufficient where it's like, oh, well, it's annoying, but yeah. it's not to the... Oh, you're gonna die because you yeah. you got People in my way. People in the states get fanatical about it. It's a really, really bad thing in the states. It's, people say it's, it's dangerous driving here. I I have figured out how to drive here, and I'm doing okay. But the things that I do here and can get away with here, I wouldn't even attempt in the United States. You get a gun pulled on you in a heartbeat. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing worse than looking down the barrel of a, a large caliber pistol. I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. It's uh, scary enough to think of the things that, you know, natural disasters and stuff that could happen on a daily basis. And then you, got you never know. That. Yeah. But having to deal with someone who literally, because they don't feel happy, could end your life? Mm -hmm. No, not cool. Right. Uh, on the subject of natural disasters, now that I mentioned it, are natural disasters a reason why someone shouldn't come to Ecuador? If you're afraid of earthquakes, definitely. I know a lot of people say, oh, I live in California all my life, and ah. I work great all the time. But, you know, if you look at, I have an app on my phone, that the earthquake app, there's earthquakes every day in Ecuador. Every once in a while, there's one right here in Monta, yeah. you know, or here in Puerto Viejo, where we are right now. If you're afraid of earthquakes, don't come here, <laughs> you know, because they happen often. But the, 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 prob the thing about earthquakes here, it's worse in Peru. If you look at the 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 seismographic maps of the Ring of Fire in South, South America and most of the activity in this region is in Peru. They have a tremendous amount of earthquakes. And then it comes up to Ecuador and you, you just see it a little scattered out here and there. And then it picks up when you get into Central America, on up through California and so forth, and on around to complete the ring. If you have any problems with earthquakes, you know, this may not be the place for you. The biggest problem with earthquakes here is the fact that they had the one in 2016 that's still in the minds of people that live here today that lived through it, both expats and locals. I know the guy that lived in my apartment that I live in during the 2016 earthquake and he told me about how he got bounced off a wall from wall to wall because it was shaking so bad. And I think, oh Lord, I mean, I don't definitely don't want to go through that. In terms of natural disasters, earthquake is really about the only thing. Well, maybe volcanoes. Oh well. In the Andes, you know, but we. If you live close enough. Yeah, if you're close enough to them. But does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Earthquakes, for sure. The thing about the the earthquakes, at least with uh, the the fact that it's still in the minds of of everyone, is because that's just I guess you could say one of the worst things that's happened here, and it left, like I told you earlier, it left a very, I guess, uh, long-lasting effect where, for example, the downtown area that we're in right now where we're recording this episode, this is where the museum is. And the downtown area, I, I can tell you with 100% with, with certainty that give it about two years, that it's been like much better. Because before these last two years, it was, you could still notice there were parts that were destroyed. There were sidewalks that still hadn't been constructed. Mm. Imagine, we're talking about an earthquake that happened 2016. That's already more than six years ago. Yeah. I, I always use a comparison that I remember seeing in my mind because it's not me who shared it. Friends who have shared it online. They show a picture of what happened in Japan because Japan is also prone to earthquakes where boom, they had an earthquake. Let's just say uh, one day, March 21st. March 22nd, it's already being fixed. Yeah. And a week later, maximum, it's already fixed. We took six plus years over here to fix a problem that was resolved in another country in less than a few days. Some people might say you can't compare Japan to Ecuador. You can't compare any place to any place. But the thing is, you're talking about an important part of the city that took forever to, to reconstruct. Like, what was the reason behind, like, it taking so long? We're not going to talk about what the reason was, but, like, just a speculative question. Like, why did it take so long? What, what's the situation here? What's making these things progress in, in such a, at such a slow pace? Now, recovery's been really slow. I mean, you see a lot of damage left over in Manta. 
especially in the Tarkey area. You see a lot of buildings that are huge cracks in them that are vacant, and mm -hmm. we don't. Nobody has the money to tear them down, so they just sit there. But it's a brutal reminder of what can happen in a devastating earthquake. The one that we had on the 18th last month was the worst earthquake we've had since the 2016 earthquake, and I remember it well. That was the day after I was sick with food poisoning, and the one that killed 14 people mm -hmm. in Ecuador, and that was on the other side of Guayaquil. It was a very frightening experience for me, you know, and it's also a big reminder that it can happen anytime, any place, <laughs> and you have to expect it. And if you're going to be fearful of that, don't come here. Definitely. There's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> and <laughs> even more definitely. <laughs> yeah. Undoubtedly. What about politics? As someone living here in Ecuador for over a year now, and I think going into your second year, right? Yeah. Well, I'm. Going, yeah, I'm, I'm going into my third year. Going into your I'm, third I've year. I've been here two years now, Two years. So, yeah. in, in your perspective, as someone living here, expat of course, mm -hmm. have you felt any effects from, from politics directly? Like, has it affected your daily, your everyday life? It does. When we talk about politics, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about politics all the way down to the street level. The fact that anybody can just blatantly run a red light mm. or a stop sign or deny right away and not get in any kind of trouble for it, that's political it's because it's allowed to happen, you know? And it's like I was telling to Stella the other day, I said, I'm so amazed that the Ecuador fired or hired 400 new police officers, but they don't have the money to buy them hats, ammunition for their guns, the equipment, the tools that they needed to do their job. And I told Stella, I said, it would be so easy to fix that if they raised revenue by ticketing traffic violators. And believe me, that would be a big business in this country. Oh you know, God. even if you just find somebody 20 bucks for running this red light, oh my God, cops can bird dog my corner behind my building and probably write 500 tickets a day. At $20 a pop, that adds up. And so I asked her, why don't they do that? And her answer was, it's political. So yeah, that's how it affects me. On the upper, the higher level, the government level, doesn't really, I don't pay much attention to it because I know I can't vote because that's why our answer in the United States, if you don't like the way politics are going, you vote. I can't do that here, so I don't pay much attention to it. I hope for the best. I expect the worst, but I hope for the best. But so far, I'm not, I'm, I'm not disappointed, other than on the street level. <laughs> <laughs> It says that that on the street level is, a, is important for your, daily, your everyday life everyday because life, yeah. it, it puts you at risk, especially when you're, if you come here driving like someone who drives in the United States, then you're going to come in with like a very, like it's going to be shocking to see the way yeah. people drive here. So it's going to be pretty tough for you in that end. Yeah. As long as it doesn't affect you though in the point where like you can't drive, because you can drive, you just got to get used to it. You have to find a way. You do. You find a way. And it's not that hard to find it. I love this word, tranquil. <laughs> it's all about tranquility. Tranquility, Get in line, go with the flow. Mm. Tranquilo. <laughs> yeah. Relax. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can do because that's honestly, can we can't change anything about that. I always like to think that some, some things like that are also cultural. Like aside from political, I'm guessing maybe they go hand in hand in some way. Because if you think about it, the policeman is just another Ecuadorian citizen. So if the policeman is allowing this to happen, it's because as a person living here, they've seen it happen their whole life, so they think it's okay. Yeah. Of course, there's the bribes and stuff like that. That's, the, that's what they've also become accustomed to here, but it's like seeing it's okay, it's like you just keep doing it. Right. I didn't want to really go into corruption because that is a problem on the street level, but you know, I, and I can't justify it by saying that they're doing it to raise money to feed their family, but that really that's the reality of it. I don't think they're doing it just to rob you or me. They're they're not getting paid much. No. You know, and it's like, hey, if we can do it, you know, they do it, you know. I don't want to get into a debate with anybody over that because it's a very controversial subject. I still say on a political level, this country could could fix a lot of their financial problems if they would do as other countries do and raise revenue through a ticketing system for violators. Getting serious about that. Yeah, getting serious about it. 
Because, I mean, there is ticketing. It's just, like I said, there's always the workaround. And yeah, like you said, and I get the, I get, I get that. That's yeah. actually a, a good point you make because police earn a good amount, mm -hmm. like in comparison to the minimum wage, of course. Mm -hmm. But is it enough really for someone living here? Like I keep saying on, on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and in general, prices are gradually going up. So what might have been enough yesterday, next uh, week yeah. might just not be enough, especially yeah. if you've got a family to feed. Right. People, I hope coming here. people don't get the wrong idea. We're not trying to discourage anybody from coming here because it's still a great place to come. No, no, no. The, the purpose of this <laughs> episode, no, no, no. The purpose of this podcast episode is just to give you reasons so that you understand. Like if any of these resonate with you to the point where you feel it's just too much in comparison to where you're at right now, then definitely, you know, make a shift or come prepared for that situation so that it doesn't impact you as much. Yeah. Because that's also an end goal of like, I guess one of the end goals of this video and of my channel in general, for you to reflect on your decision and make sure that the decision that you're making is 100% informed. Not just, I heard someone say, this rent is really cheap. I heard someone say that the people are, are like this. I heard someone say that the streets are like this. Listen to, to other perspectives of other people who are living here, other people who have lived here a long time, and really compare that to what you've been told. And more than anything, like we've recently talked about, come here yourself. Yeah. Because the, the argument, it's, we can say millions of things, and our reality might just be very different from the reality of someone else. Yeah. Oh, we could do another podcast, and we probably should do it someday, is reasons why you should come here. Of course. I can come up with a lot, <laughs> you know. Even I could. Yeah. For sure. But for now, focusing on the things, yeah. reasons maybe you might not want to come here. What about when it comes to the price of things like technology, things like essential needs, everyday needs? Maybe not tech. Tech is one of those things that you could sometimes call luxury. But you can also call it a necessity. Don't come here if you think you can just walk into a mall and see an Apple store right there and <laughs> buy the latest M1 Pro with the fastest processor and the latest Apple monitor and or any electronic device. I, I tell people Ecuador is 10 years behind in technology when it comes to, I'm sure I could buy this phone here in Ecuador, maybe in Quito, but I couldn't find it here. I couldn't find it here in Monta. And, but that's just an example. I mean, there are, here's a good way to answer this question. Don't come here if you think you can live without Amazon. Ah. <laughs> because you're just going to need Amazon, you know. <laughs> and it's like, I got a good question from a guy this morning. Same thing as me. He wears 13 wide shoes. He didn't ask me if he can buy them here because he probably knew better. Because I don't know if you can buy 13 wide shoes here. I'm sure somewhere you can. But I haven't seen them anywhere here in Ecuador. Not here in Monta. But I taught, and his question was, how much will it cost me to ship them from the United States? Of course, I said, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, get, get on Amazon and do a, start an order and price it out and see what it costs. There are a lot of things that you are not going to find here in terms of shopping and buying goods and services. So don't come here if you think you're going to find the best of everything because it's not here. It's pretty interesting how, well, first, more than anything, how Amazon has become such a key part of a lot of people's lives. I remember when I lived in the States, it was all about Walmart. Like you would go to Walmart and that's where you find everything you need. Now it's, well, everything you need in terms of like everyday yeah. essentials. But now Amazon seems to be the best way to get anything you need. Yeah. Anything and like almost immediately. And people complain. And when it's not there. always for the good either because I can remember many times in the States before I came here that I needed something. And I would look on Amazon and order it because I could get same day delivery on it. Instead of me getting off my fat butt and going to the store and buying it, I would just order it from Amazon and know that I'm going to have a package coming that day. And sure enough, it would show up that evening. Now, you're not going to get that here. <laughs> no. You know, but you can get week and a half delivery from Amazon here. So. I have noticed that they've become a lot better with the process with Amazon. I don't know exactly what the whole process is. I remember for, I remember when it first started, like, you know, Amazon being a thing here, mm -hmm. you could get something sent to a PO box in the States and then have that somehow reach over here with a courier. 
I don't know what it is now. I don't know if Amazon directly delivers straight to Ecuador. That's what I'm not yeah, sure they about. They do. If you, can, you, if you open an Amazon account and you show your address as Mata Mata B Ecuador, you will be taken to an Amazon Ecuador website and you'll find probably what you need. And Amazon will calculate your import fees, shipping and do it all in one set fee. And when they say they'll deliver it on the 15th, so far for me, it's shown up on the 15th. I haven't proven this yet, but I was, my understanding, and I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong on this, if Amazon gets the import fees wrong, they pay the bill. When I've ordered and had stuff drop shipped through my U.S. shipping out of Miami and have it shipped here, I always get an extra bill from FedEx, import fees, service charges. Amazon doesn't do that. What you what you get charged is what you pay. That's it. And it comes here. It comes right to my, my apartment. That's not bad. That's Pretty recent. decent. That's within six months. Do you happen to know if uh, just a little bit of extra thing, maybe you could even dedicate a video to this one day, but do you know if uh, it also has the restrictions that, because I know Ecuador has some things that you can have yeah. sent to Ecuador, yeah, they're, but they're, there's, a, there's a specific like price restriction, size restriction, yes. If no. it's tech or if it's not tech. Usually the restrictions are there are items that you will see. And I'm trying to think of a good example. Something that I wanted to order and it flat out said that's not available in your country. You will run across that. That's why I said it's a limited product line. But for most of your essentials that you need in life, you're going to pretty much find what you want. And it's definitely better than what it yeah. was before then. Yeah. Definitely, because before there was nothing. Right. I wanted a thermometer, a meat thermometer that I can tie to with through Bluetooth to my phone. I ordered it from Amazon, got it in a week and a half, it cost me eighty nine dollars. I paid twenty something dollars for shipping, it was a little over a hundred bucks. And I got it in a week and a half. And the import fees on it was like ten dollars or something like that. You know, it was very minimal. But I can't rent there was something else that I wanted to order. It was something for my phone, and it, I was told it wasn't available. I don't remember what it was, but there are I, there are restrictions. I just tell everybody, get on Amazon. Get on Amazon, change your address to, a, to an Ecuadorian address, and see. Go shopping. Check it out. Uh, yeah. All right. Don't ask me. <laughs> do it yourself. Do the test. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll probably have to do that one day just to see what's available and see if mm -hmm. there's anything that I might be able to get because I've always had that restriction with Right. with buying anything online just because the process is sending it to the states having it brought over here but if there's a way to get it over here directly i mean it's worth a shot there are a lot of things you can do you can get shipped directly here worth a shot glad they changed that over these past few mm -hmm. months i guess just as a final not well it's the same talking point just as uh final thoughts is there anything else that you would consider in general terms of ecuador that might make someone that w would be a reason why someone shouldn't come here that we haven't talked about. If you have a bad attitude, you have to come here with an open mind and be willing to accept the way it is. Come here with no expectations, you know, that are anywhere related to how you lived in the United States and you'll be okay. But if you're going to come here with high expectations and come here with, well, this is the way we did it in the United States, you're going to be in the wrong place. You're not going to make it here expectations are the thief of joy yeah i will never forget that quote it was uh if i remember correctly it was by mkbhd i don't know if he got it from someone else i know i got it from him from marquez brown lee yeah every time i've had some kind of expectation not just related to ecuador but in general when it's not like that it has really brought me down so <laughs> that's a really good piece of advice come here like first, obviously, like we've said, and I, this is probably going to be uh, something that I'm always going to mention in podcast episodes, YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, so I might sound like a broken speaker at this point, but come here first. Like if you're planning to come to Ecuador to live, retire to, come to Ecuador first, spend a few, a month maybe if you can, mm -hmm. live the life for like a month, feel it out, really like get to know things like not just the touristic thing, because I've seen a lot of people before they come to Ecuador, they're like, I took a one week vacation to Cuenca. Mm -hmm. Of course, a one week vacation is going to look really pretty because it's a vacation. Yeah. Come here with the, with the mentality that you're going to come here to live for a month, not on vacation. You're living here for a month and then make your final decision if that's really what you want to do, depending on the city you go to, of course. Mm -hmm. Cuenca, Quito, Guayaquil, 
any city. I don't really recommend 100% Guayaquil yet. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't recommend it yet. I know it, yeah. it'll be a good city once they fix their problems, but I can't recommend it yet. But if you get the chance to come here, spend a month, then afterwards make your decision of, is this the right place for me? Remember, we have a lot of things to talk about in future podcast episodes, sure. future collaborations. We actually did one today. So make sure you check out Don Shader's channel. He just recently hit 6K subscribers on YouTube. A big congrats to Don. We still got a long way to go. Make sure to check out his catalog of videos. He is no BS content. So if you need information, definitely go check him out. Stay tuned for future episodes of the Ace Talks podcast. Don, it was great having you here. Yeah, my pleasure. I hope to see you again in a future episode, future video collaborations. Yep. Thank you very much for listening to this episode or checking it out on YouTube. Stay tuned for future episodes. And as always, ace out. Ace out. <laughs>